What is up guys? My name is Hussain and today I'm going to be showing you how to do a tutorial for the mission on FSX called Caribbean Landing. It's a very nice landing. This is, was one of the first missions I've ever done on FSX and I can't tell you how many times I failed. Could, I always had the normal proposal of first fire. I just, Degrees and uh, come in on a high approach, come on a lower approach, stall a bit, or then just never have the proper approach. I could always get to the runway, but I can never get to the runway. So what I realized was, you know what, I'm going to do the, the new way, and I'm going to just use autopilot. Alright, so it turns out. So to right to 130 and down to 3000. Okay, so as you see, I've switched on my altitude, heading, speed, and autopilot. Right now, I'm on navigation mode. I'm, I'll just turn it, put it back on GPS right now because I like GPS. Alright, so now reduce speeding to 180 knots. Right, so to 180 knots. Just remember the controls autopilot engage, speed engage, heading engage, and all altitude engage. This is one of the first planes I learned how to do an ILS and an auto and how to use the proper autopilot functions in order to fly. I really like the controls and it's very easy to use autopilot on this. Um, unlike the A321 and the A340, where each switch requires you to click it twice, and um, even though it shows a selection, sometimes it's not selected, which really messes you up and. Um, always takes a lot of time to learn but this one is very easy this is the for autopilot engage autopilot disengage this is your speed this is your approach hold on if you're on um, ILS this is your back course switch hold switch on if the runway has two simultaneous uh, ILS approaches all right so we're a bit a little fast this is our navigation hold if you want to wish uh, wish to fly the waypoints However, in this mission, there is a waypoint, but it doesn't line us up to the runway. Therefore, we're not using waypoints, and there's no ILS, so we can't do any ILS. And this is the altitude, as you see. And this takes care, this is your altitude um, hold selector, and this is your vertical um, speed. So just fly under normal 1,800 feet per minute. That should be fine. All right, let's decrease speed a bit. So I'm just going to use my speed brakes. Just click on the screen to maximize this. Alright, so it asks us to turn left to 100. The reason why you don't see any heading reference is it's right there. So only when you turn do you actually see which course you're holding on, which is kind of bad. So what I mean is basically when I whenever I turn the heading knob, that's the only time I actually see which what my selection for heading is on. Or if I just hover my uh, mouse over the heading knob, I see my reference. Anyway, I see runway right now. Our runway is right there. So I'm just going to get started up for landing lights. Check on my landing lights. So wing panel lights on, taxi recognition in line, and passenger seatbelt lights on. Uh, arm my, I'm going to arm, arm my speed brake lever. Okay, so we're clear for the visual. Flaps down and reduce speed to one about 130, 135 knots. Alright, so what I'm going to do now is disengage, and now this is me manually flying. I'm just going to put on, I'm going to put on my, um,
my PF my PFD, which is the primary fight display, is on um, is on full screen as you can see on on the left. Right now, I'm not gonna really correct for the runway because I'm gonna I, I see the runway, but I'm gonna let it. Okay, I'm gonna correct a bit for the runway as the heading does not give us the proper vectors, and I'm gonna slowly start increasing my flaps. The closer I get, the more I increase my flaps. And in a bit, I'll also put in my put down my. As you can see, there is no glide slope in the indicator. All you see is the four lights on the runway to tell you if the correct glide slope or not. Um, one more thing: in flight simulator, whenever you're making a landing, make sure all your all your um, the very sensitive. The yoke is very sensitive. Each correction you make should never be vigorous, and you should never make very too steep turns or anything. But that really affects. Alright, let's have landing gear down. One more notch of flaps. As I can, you can feel that the plane is going lower. That's fine. We are a bit high on our um, this. As long as I get to correct myself, I'm slowly making minor corrections on the right. Okay, I'm also gonna put it on. I'm gonna arm my um, speed brakes are on. This is a very short runway, so I'm gonna use as I touch down on all my main wheels. I'll also put on okay, one more set of flaps, and that's maximum. Done. We're on 900 feet. That looks fine. We are coming in a bit high, but uh, we're on a thousand feet. Uh, our descent rate is a thousand feet, thousand two hundred now. We're going a bit faster. Okay. Gonna pull up a bit. It's correct. Okay, disengage my oil thrust, and I'm gonna start flaring up right now as I touch down. And apply brakes. I need brakes. Okay, and uh, 60 knots. Disengage reverse thrust. Okay, and as you saw, that was a really nice landing. And this was all manual, there was no ILS involved in this, this was just by hand. And yes, it does take a lot of experience, it does take a lot of time in the simulator to get it right. And it requires a lot of gut your instinct and your intuitive, intuitive um, instinct in order to fly and land it perfectly and get that perfect flare and perfect approach speed, especially if you're not using ILS. There we go. Alright, so I'm just going to park it right now. So just, just remember, don't flare up too early. And also, if you feel at any time you are too short, you can always use a thrust. And uh, that was a perfect, beautiful landing.